Hello everybody, and welcome back to Ethelork Plays Go. Today, I'm going to be talking about playing tempo, or playing speed. So, what am I talking about when I'm talking about playing speed? Well, when you play a move, we have a clock, or rather, when you play a game, we have a clock, and when we play, that clock runs out as we use time to think. And when we use that time to think, we're able to read moves in advance and be able to evaluate positions better. And as you improve, or rather, when you start the game, you don't have a lot of idea about what you should be playing. And so reading is really difficult. And then as you play, or as you learn, then you get this kind of prior understanding of what you should be playing. And then what that means is that you can use that prior understanding, this kind of intuition, and not think very much at all. And so as you become more experienced, not necessarily as you get better, but at least as you become more experienced at your rank, you get an idea of what, what kind of prior ideas you can use. And this feels really good. You know, it's why people really enjoy playing Blitz games. Um, there's a bit of an instant gratification angle to it. Um, and there's also some amount of impatience where you just want to see the results. You don't want to think too much about it. And that's just how things go. So this is all the stuff that we're talking about. We're talking about playing tempo or playing speed. And the issue is that if you over overemphasize your intuition too much, it can limit your advancement in the game. Well, why is this? It's because your prior intuitions are only prior intuitions based on what you've played before. And so it blocks new ideas and you don't double check the moves that you play, which aren't, aren't as good. And so it also leads to more careless mistakes. And the issue is that if you want to improve, then what you need to do is you need to find the moves that you will get wrong, no matter how much you think of them, because they represent problems with your thinking and you want to correct those mistakes. But when you play quickly, you don't really know which of those problems you would have found on your own if you had just thought about it a little bit more. Um, and that's basically the issue, basically like muddy the issue a little bit. It also gives you a little bit of an excuse where if you do see the real answer, you'll think, oh, well, of course, that's the right way. I'll just play that next time. And, they, and that's kind of like a, a confirmation bias kind of thinking where you, you believe that you understand something, so therefore you understand it where it's not really the case. And so, okay, let's say that we all accept that playing quickly is a difficult way to improve. It isn't bad in all situations, say that you don't have a strong intuition, and maybe that's something you want to work on. But if you're somebody who uh, has this issue and who acknowledges it, you don't necessarily have to, but let's just say that you do, um, then the issue is that your very quick play can also be a little bit involuntary. And what this means is that even if you understand that this is a problem, that you don't necessarily stop playing quickly. And that's really, really a really difficult situation because then you're in this problem space. You understand that you you don't like you aren't able to learn as well as you could, but you also can't really get out of that situation. That's a really difficult place to be in. Often it's a bad habit that happens if you play a lot of online Go. So if you play a lot against online opponents, it's just random people, and let's say that they're not very focused on the game then they will also play very quickly. And then it's easy for both of you to just have like a race to the bottom with just playing these blitz moves. And often moves that seem very obvious don't seem like they need a lot more thinking. So if you have strong prior intuitions, you might even say, oh, well, of course, obviously this move. So even you just don't have that doubting mechanism or capability that's not very well trained. Um, and to be fair, overthinking moves is often not a great place to be either because then you're wasting time that you could be spent on more effective reading. So this isn't to say that we should all be thinking really, really deeply about our moves all the time. And certainly some moves are more natural than others such that you can pass them. And even some amount of misclassification of what time, what moves you should spend your time on is is okay and possible. But we're talking about how we can possibly reduce the misclassification so that we spend the time where we, on the moves where we want to spend them. So there are some general concepts that we'll want to understand. So the first one that I mention all the time is that Go is an infinitely complex game and often there can be many approaches in a game and it can be really easy to take that for granted. And just one way to kind of prove that to you is by pulling up Katrain. So here's a game that I played against another Jungsung member. Um, what's important is not necessarily the game. I, I think in this game I lost pretty badly, but 
we can see already that there's quite a lot of choice to start with. Um, I, what I want you to pay attention to is just look at all of these green points. And for every move that appears, just count the number of green points in the board. So here, we're already on move two. There's still a lot of choice. But even as the game moves on, say we move to here, uh, what are we on? Move 17? There's still, you know, a number of different directions that either player can choose to go into. And as we continue, I mean, there are some really bad mistakes. So here, this is a mistake that I made that lets white come out here. But let me see. So here, I mean, here even there are a couple of choices. That, so it, AI really wants the, uh, white to turn over here. So here, for instance, it might be a little bit more obvious, but at the same time, it's a bit of an exception that you have these really narrow situations where only a couple of moves are required, but already you need to choose between these two and these two. So already it's not very, very, very straightforward. Um, and so as the game progresses, I mean, okay, there's, there's this point here that was really, really big, and the AI says, okay, you really, really need to play here. But if we pass that situation, then still, there are a couple of choices on the board. And all this is to say is that it's not that there are never, there's never the move to play. So for instance, like, if I have this really, really bad mistake, this, this purple move here, I mean, basically, this is the only move. But how many moves do you play that have such a decisive factor where there's no other thought that really needs to go into it? You just play Atari because... Black left it open, and white can cut through, and this is a terrific result for white. White is connected and everything. You know, sometimes, but definitely not every single move of the game. And that's basically all that I want to prove or show with that example. Um, and the second thing is that in a similar vein that Go is infinitely complex, as humans, we are not infinitely wise. And we are finite, and we choose mistakes, and we don't see everything. So even you know, the AI, AI is able to able to see things with a certain amount of accuracy at a certain speed, so that it does, well, even the AI needs time to read things out, but it, we have, like, play playouts and everything like that that increases its strength. But, you know, as a human, we definitely don't have this kind of capability, so we definitely need our thinking time. And one thing as well is that if you try and slow down, you might find that you play a lot better than you think. So you'll be playing at a certain rank, and if you just find a way to slow down, then you'll find ways to, you'll just find better moves, and you'll be able to get ahead, and I think like a, the game will really start to unfold or open up to you in this way. So okay, we've talked about the problem of playing quickly, and what concepts to understand in order to just, just things to develop this mindset of how to play slower. So here are some more concrete things that you can do as well. The first thing is to play against serious games against people who will take their time. I know there's some amount of personality that should be taken with one's playing speed, where even if you're playing against a Blitz player or against an AI, you should be able to slow down, but that's just not necessarily how things work. You'll kind of fall into the same pace as your opponents, so it's good to find opponents. Sometimes it will be in, a, on an, in a, like, an online club, or, um, in real life club, but online as well, against players who will who you know will play slower, and that can give you a lot of practice since they'll actually punish you if you play too quickly because they are slower, more methodical playing players. Another thing to do is to control your game speed from the start. So even if there's a Joseki, positions that you know, you should still slow down your pace and still just, just relax and don't use all of your time. Just to take, uh, take that time, even if you really, under, like, because that, that pace at the start of the game that, that sets a lot of the tone for the game. So if you play through the Joseki really, really quickly, then you're really likely to play the rest of the game like that. Another thing to do, and this is probably the advice that people don't want to hear, it's that if you play a lot of games, but also to Mego somewhat regularly, then that can help, or to, or not a lot of games, but just play fewer games and play and do more life and death problems. Then that will also tilt you in that direction of being more introspective about your moves. Another thing is something that's really, really simple, posture. After you finish your move, take your hand off the mouse, hand off the bowl, and just sit back and relax. Like, literally lean back into your seat. When I play online games, so Yongsan games or other kinds of league games, I literally have this kind of, like, posture where I sit back into my chair, and this is how I'm basically looking at the board. And what that does is it removes you from the space, literally, so that if you want to play a move, you have to lean forward. 
And if you're playing too quickly, then you'll find that you're playing this kind of lean forward and back a lot. And that, sh that already should kind of get you to calm down and just say, like, okay, well, I don't want to lean forward, so I should lean back. It might not necessarily be the case. You might just say, okay, well, I'm just going to lean forward into the mouse. But uh, this comes to my next point, which is that if you realize that you're playing too quickly at any point in the game, immediately stop, immediately like count to 10 and just, just calm down. You'll probably find that you play just played some bad move because as you start to think more, you'll realize, oh, I could have played here instead. But that doesn't mean you should double down on the quick playing. It should means that that's a good sign to take the pedal off the gas and just just take take things down a notch a little bit. Another thing is to consider multiple moves before playing. So if you look at the board and say, okay, well, there's A, B, C, D, or A, B, C, or A, B, or whatever you 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 want in that situation, that doesn't really matter. What it matters is that you enumerate your choices and to think and to evaluate each one. And what you'll do is that as you evaluate, you'll find new moves. And that's when the reading really starts to unfold. Like the game really starts to come alive. Um, it's not that playing quickly is, you know, bad. It can be like exciting, but there is a certain amount of depth uh, and interest and intrigue to this game that can only really reveal itself if you take time to just take it in. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned, uh, before playing, counting, counting, say, to 5 or to 10, that can also be, if all else fails, you have no other rules that stick with you, then that one also works as well. So that those are already some strategies that you can use. Hopefully, if you take all this on board, what this means is that you become more present with your play, and you start to enjoy the game more, because you start to engage with it uh, in a deeper kind of way. Hopefully, it, you'll see your luck improve, uh, your reading will be better, hopefully you start to kill more groups. That's certainly a motivating thing for me, and... Uh, you'll learn more from each game as well, because every mistake that you make will be one that's truly representative of the problems that you have in your thinking. And so that's basically all that I wanted to cover today, just uh, something that's a little bit of a quick note, because this is some some advice that I gave to a player at my local Go Club uh, this week, and I thought this would be really great for a video, so I just thought I'd sit down and talk it all out. If you enjoy this kind of content, like, comment, and subscribe. Hopefully I'll come out with more of these kinds of videos soon, and I will see you in the next one.